Good morning everyone, today we're going to be talking about the progress on my Ship 4 character. As you may have noticed, my Ship 4 character looks very similar to my Ship 2 character or what she used to look like, and that is because I've been messing around quite a bit in the salon. But before we jump into the video, if you're new to the channel, I upload NGS content daily, so if you do play this game, I would really appreciate the subscribe as it really helps out the channel. Anyway, without further ado, let's begin the video. Alright, so before we jump into my gear, I just want to remind everyone that the salon is still going to be free for two more weeks. You can change anything, including your hair color, and you can change your body sliders. So if you want your legs to be longer, shorter, etc., you can play around with all of that. As you can see over here, the current body type that I'm actually using is a type 1 body type because uh, they never made a type 2 body type of this specific outfit that I'm wearing. I got a ton of inspiration from Kibi over here, the one sitting on my left side with the pink kimono. I was like, wow, that's really, really amazing because that is also a type 1 body outfit. And I just realized, okay, maybe I can do something if I spend enough time tweaking things and making things look nice. And this is the final result. Personally, I am quite happy with how my character looks. You know, she looks, you know, obviously flat, unfortunately, but uh, it can't be helped. It is the body type. This is the only way that I could get this outfit in NGS, or at least the NGS version of this outfit. And what's even better is this outfit only cost me 800,000 Meseta on ship 4, which is usually the most expensive ship because simply the smaller player base outfits are a little bit harder to come by so being able to snag it off the market for so cheap definitely is a huge advantage but with all of that out of the way i'm sure you guys are waiting to see my gear so first of all of course i did manage to get a kaiser katana i did have to buy the rocks katana all right i was not lucky enough to get a rocks drop i had to buy it off the market i did pay 5 million meseta for it which at the time was a really good deal so um that was why i bought it and then as for the augments themselves We've got Gigas Might 3, Died Soul 3, Ult Secretor 3, Dreadkeeper 3, and we got a Spirit Might. This is because I managed to get this off the treasure shop. Now obviously in a perfect world it would be a Death Might, but it never showed up in my treasure shop, so Spirit Might was what I went with. Now as for my armors, I went with the Sasato Armor Argas, so all three pieces are exactly the same and exactly the same augments as well, and that is Decold Might. Addy Guard Mel, as well as Gigas Might 3, Dido Soul 3, and Dread Keeper 3. So this increases my damage resistance by 4.4% per piece, so it adds up to quite a bit actually. And if we look at my total stats I gain from each piece, I gain 75 HP, 16 PP, 12.8% melee potency per piece, so it is quite a bit. So when we look at my overall stats, I have 57.1% weapon potency, I have 777 HP, and 175 PP. This is an extremely powerful and well-rounded build. However, again, just like my Ship 2 character, it is more centered around defense and less about offense. I'm sure a lot of you guys are probably sitting at 64%, 65%, or even 70% potency. If you go just a little bit more aggressive, you ditch the Dread Keepers and you put more potency on that instead, you can definitely push those damage numbers a lot higher. But I'm also sure that a lot of you guys have a lot less HP than myself. So what about my friends which are on a tight budget or want to do a budget build, what type of augments would I recommend? I would pretty much recommend still going with the Sasato Armors Arga as long as it has the Decold Might or whatever stat that you need. It has to have this simply because of the stat itself. It gives you 2.5% of whatever potency you want as well as the 25% low temperature damage resistance. This alone is extremely powerful considering that you get these armors from the red box which means everyone is guaranteed to get one one of each type of armor piece, so you'll only need to buy another two pieces, which definitely cuts down on cost. As for the augments themselves, I would definitely stick with the Gigas Might 3, the Dido Soul 3, and the Dread Keeper 3, because you can get the Gigas Might as well as the Dread Keeper from the event shop, so please go to the event shop, buy all of those capsules, and just put it on your armor. Now there is an 80% chance of success, so you will need a 20% booster in order to guarantee the augment to stick on your armor. As for the Dido Soul 3, you should have quite a bit of this especially if you did the last season's mission pass however if you haven't don't worry you can actually replace Dido Soul 3 with something even better and that is the Frostal Soul 3 and that is because with the current season 10 mission pass at tier 29 over here you'll notice that you can get 10 Frostal Soul 3s so you simply pick that up and you pop that into your armor and you're good to go and then for your last augment I do not recommend going in Addy Capsule 
unless you're really, really stacked and you do have a bunch of money or you've simply saved up your ID capsules from before and you don't mind spending them. Personally, I wouldn't use an ID capsule simply because it's really, really expensive. I would probably go with a Tria capsule. So you can obtain Tria capsules from the Geometric Labyrinth. For those who don't know where the Geometric Labyrinth is, it's right here at the Trinitas. As you can see right here, Geometric Labyrinth. You will need to teleport into Retem City or anywhere in Retem in order to access this. You can't just teleport here from Kabaris or from Alio. You do need to be somewhere in Retem. But these Tria capsules are extremely powerful because they do give you 2.25% weapon potency. Now keep in mind there are multiple types of Tria capsules. So for example, there is the Star O Tech or the Star O Whatevers. That is minus 5 HP in order to give you this. Then we have the Spirit O Whatevers, which minus 3 PP in order to gain that potency. You have the Deft one, which is not worth it. Never use this one. You lose 1% floor potency in order to gain the damage. And you don't want to do this, especially if you're using a Kaiser weapon, because we already have extremely low floor potency. So lowering it even more is not very beneficial for you and will actually make you lose a lot of damage. And the last one is the Gardo whatever, which makes you lose 1% damage resistance. I personally would stick with the minus 5 HP. I think this is the most cost effective one. However, if you don't really need that much PP, the minus 3 PP is also a viable option. But yeah, overall, I'm very happy with my ship for characters progression she is extremely powerful she's actually stronger than my ship 2 character right now simply because my ship 2 character has not upgraded her armor because i am waiting for something more significant currently the difference between the dark falls armor or the swazest armor versus the Sasato armor isn't that big. It isn't really big enough to justify a huge upgrade for me on ship two, which is why I'm holding off. But for my ship four character, it was definitely a huge jump since the previous armors I were using was extremely budget. And this time I went really, really hard on the investment. So uh, yeah, my ship four character is really, really decked out right now. Special thanks to all the members for supporting the channel. It really means a lot to me. Thank you again. But yeah, that's all I wanted to cover in today's video. Hopefully you guys found it interesting. If you did, I would appreciate a like and a subscribe. And I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video. Bye!